welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat chari karti bari bharti संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलं जगत चरी करति बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर स्टडिंग द थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप्स ऑफ समास इन संस्कृत Currently, we are focused on the Bahuvrihi Samasa, and we have already studied the Avyayi Bhava Samasa before, and we shall be studying the Dvandva Samasa at the end of this course. Bahuvrihi Samasa is an important type of Samasa in Sanskrit. The explanation of the Bahuvrihi Samasa can be given in brief by this particular equation, which we have been explaining. in each and every lecture and as we have already stated the repetition is to bring home the point of the three important features of the samasa and who is the head in which samasa in the bahuvrihi samasa neither x nor y the constituents acts as the head of the samasa the head lies outside of the constituents of the samasa which is a very unique feature of the bahuvrihi samasa it is called anya padartha pradhana where x and y which are independent units in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent but they are semantically related and the speaker of sanskrit wants to merge them together and bring out and output which is one unit in the form of x y in terms of the meaning as well as the word form as well as the accent so it has got three features aikarthya ekarthata aikapadya ekapadata and aikasvarya ekasvarata in the ashtadhyayi the bahuvrihi samasa is stated at various places so the samasa vidhayaka sutras are stated in a section that begins with 2.2.22 shesho 2.2.23 shesho bahuvrihi up to 2.2.28 tena saheti tulya yoge the samasa anta pratyaya vidhayaka sutras are stated in a big section that begins with 54113 up to 54 One six zero, and part of this big section also deals with the samasanta adeshas and not pratyayas. And the swaravidhaya ka sutras are stated in six point two. Six point two point one is bahuvriha prakritya purva padam, and then the other sections six point two point one zero six up to six point two point one hundred and twenty, and then six point two point one sixty two onwards. Up to six point two point one hundred and seventy seven. We have finished studying the Samasa Vidhaya Ka Sutras, and we are about to study the Samasa Anta Pratyaya Vidhaya Ka Sutras. But before that, it is imperative to study an important point, namely the Umbad Bhava and the Sutra stating this particular operation. We won't be able to go into the details of all the sutras. that deal with this particular phenomenon but it is important for us to study at least one sutra in very detail so we have been studying the pumbad bhava in the previous lectures and previously we have studied the sutra 
and also we started studying the counter examples or the pratyudaharanas the first question is what is pumvad bhava and this is the answer a feminine form goes back to the form of the nominal root is called pumvad bhava a feminine form generated by adding a suffix to the nominal root goes back to the form of the nominal root the location of this operation is the purva pada of a compound with limited environment existing around within the purva pada as well as uttara pada that can be stated in the following form of an equation where we have the purva pada pratipadika plus tri pratyaya plus su and the uttara pada pratipadika plus tri pratyaya plus su in this case the samasa saudnya takes place and pratipadika saudnya takes place so then su gets deleted by the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho and so we have pratipadika plus tri pratyaya plus 0 plus pratipadika plus tri pratyaya plus 0 as the output on the second step it can be rewritten as pratipadika plus tri pratyaya being the purva pada plus pratipadika plus tri pratyaya being the uttara pada now pumvad bhava tells us that this tri pratyaya in the purva pada which is put in bold characters disappears and the description of it is that the pratipadika plus tri pratyaya form goes back to the pratipadika form this is called pumvad bhava and so the output generated is pratipadika plus 0 plus pratipadika plus tri pratyaya and then the derivation process continues this is what is pumvad bhava in a nutshell this is the sutra 6334 which deals with this important phenomenon called pumvad bhava The sutra is Striya Pumbat Bhashita Pumska Danung Samanadhi Karane Striyam Apurani Priyadishu I repeat Striya Pumbat Bhashita Pumska Danung Samanadhi Karane Striyam Apurani Priyadishu As is clear from the rendition of this sutra Striya Pumbat this is the main sentence in the sutra and then bhashita pumska danung samanadhi karane striyam apurani priyadishu is a part of the sutra which states some conditions let us look at these words one by one we have already done this but we should revisit it only to make it more confirmed striyaha is 6/1 of 3 which means in place of a word denoting feminine gender pumvat means like a nominal root form bhashita pumska is panchami ekavachana of bhashita pumska which means immediately after the word which is a bhashita pumska we have already studied what is bhashita pumska so the meaning of the overall sutra is immediately before an uttara pada that is in the purva pada in place of a word whose nominal root or pratipadika is such that it declines in all three genders denoting the same core meaning and two which does not end in the suffix ung ending in the feminine suffix is placed its nominal root form if one the uttara pada is coreferential with it two if it denotes the feminine gender three if it does not end in the purana suffix and four it does not belong to the group of words which begins with the word priya i repeat immediately before an uttara pada that is in the purva pada uttara pade in place of a word whose nominal root is such that it declines in all three genders denoting the same core meaning bhashita pumskat which does not end in the suffix ung anungah anung ending in the feminine suffix striyaha is placed its nominal root or pratipadika form pumvat if the uttara pada is coreferential with it samanadhikarane it denotes the feminine gender striyam it does not end in the purana suffix apurani it does not belong to the group of words which begins with the word priya apriyadishu 
अपूरणी प्रियादेशो सो हियर द इनपुट इज प्रातिपदिक प्लस स्त्री प्रत्यय स्त्री प्रत्यय इज इन बोल्ड प्लस प्रातिपदिक प्लस स्त्री प्रत्यय एंड द आउटपुट इज प्रातिपदिक प्लस जीरो वेर द बोल्ड कैरेक्टर स्त्री प्रत्यय इन द पूर्व पद इज नॉट देयर इज डिलीटेड प्लस प्रातिपदिक प्लस स्त्री प्रत्यय द उत्तर पद एज इट इज द इनपुट कैन बी फर्दर एक्सप्लेन बाय सेंग दैट द प्रातिपदिक इज भाषित पुंस्क and the stri pratyaya is not ong and the pratipadika of the uttara pad is samanadhikarana pratipadika and the stri pratyaya in the uttara pad is neither purana nor does it belong to the group of the words which begin with priya and the output is bhashita pumska pratipadika plus 0 plus samanadhikarana pratipadika plus stri pratyaya not purana and not priyadi let us now look at some other counter examples we have already seen the three counter examples and the necessity of those conditions as far as the operation of pumad bhava taking place let us study some more counter examples samanadhi karane kim this is the pratyudaharana prashna samanadhi karane इज द प्रश्नोदिष्ट शब्द समानाधिकरण किम इज द प्रत्युदाहरण प्रश्न एंड कल्याण्या माता कल्याणी माता इज द उदाहरण विच इज इष्ट विच वुड नॉट हैव बीन जनरेटेड एट देर बीन समानाधिकरण नॉट बीन देर सो द क्वेश्चन इज वाई शुड द उत्तर पद बी को रेफरेंशियल विद द पूर्व पद दैट इज why should both refer to the same entity answer is because if the purva pada is not co referential with the purva pada then the operation of mad bhava will not take place the essence of the question is why should the uttara pada be co referential with the purva pada in order to have the operation of mad bhava take place and the answer is because if the purva pada is not co referential with the uttara pada then the operation of pumad bhava will not take place this is a necessary condition let us look at the example the meaning is the mother of the auspicious one kalyanyaha mata mata is the mother and kalyanyaha is of the auspicious lady auspicious one so we have the alaukika vigraha kalyani plus ngas plus matru plus su samasa saudnya takes place this is the shashti tatpurusha samasa and then the pratipadika saudnya happens then supodhatu pratipadika yoga applies and deletes both the sups so we have kalyani plus 0 plus matru plus 0 and so we have kalyani matru as the finally derived compound output then we add the suffix su to it and then we get the form kalyani mata to be used in the sentence what happens here is the following here the purva pada is kalyani this word denotes feminine gender after adding the suffix ni to the pratipadika nominal root namely kalyana the word kalyana denotes the same core meaning namely auspicious when used in all three genders so it is a bhashita pumska word but it appears in the sixth case demonstrating non co referentiality vyadhikaranata or vyadhikaranya as it is called so all other conditions applying namely one purva pada denoting feminine gender purva pada being a bhashita pumska the uttara pada denoting the feminine gender the uttara pada not ending in the purana suffix and the uttara pad not belonging to the words which are part of the group priyati the condition of the purva pad not being co referential with the uttara pad not fulfilled the condition of the purva pad being co referential with the uttara pad is not fulfilled and hence the operation of the pumad bhava does not take place 
Similarly, the next Pratyudaharana is Striyam Itikim. Here the Prashnodhishta Shabda is Striyam and Itikim are the Prashnavachaka Shabdas. And uh, Kalyani Pradhana Mesham, Kalyani Pradhana Ime, this is the Pratyudaharana. This wouldn't have been generated if the words Triyam were absent from the Sutra 6334. So the question here is, why should the Uttarapada denote the feminine gender while referring to the same entity in order for the Pumat Bhava to take place? Simple answer is because if the Uttarapada does not denote the feminine gender, then the operation of Pumat Bhava will not take place. This is a necessary condition. So the meaning is, those amongst whom the head is an auspicious female, if this is to be expressed, then we have Kalyani Pradhanamisham as the Laukika Vigraha and then the Alaukika Vigraha would be Kalyani plus Su plus Pradhana plus Su. Here Samasa Saudhnya takes place, then the Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place. So we apply Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho and delete both the Sups. So we have Kalyani plus zero plus Pradhana plus zero. And when we join them together, we get the finally derived Bahuvrihi Samasa output as Kalyani Pradhana. Now Kalyani Pradhana is added with the suffix Jas and so we get the form Kalyani Pradhanaha. Here, the Purvapada is Kalyani. This word denotes feminine gender after adding the suffix Nip to the Pratipadikan, that is the nominal root Kalyana. Then the word Kalyana denotes the same core meaning, namely auspicious, when used in all three genders. So it is also a Bhashita Pumska. It also is co-referential with the meaning of the Uttarapada. So all other conditions applying, namely the Purvapada denoting feminine gender, the Purvapada being a Bhashita Pumska, the Purvapada being co-referential with the Uttarapada, and the Uttarapada not ending in the Purana suffix, as well as the Uttarapada not belonging to the words which are part of the group Priyadi. All these conditions applying, but the condition of the Uttarapada denoting the feminine gender is not fulfilled in this case. Kalyani Pradhanam. The Uttarapada does not denote the feminine gender and hence the operation of the Pumvad Bhava does not take place. Similarly, the next Pratyudaharana question is Apurani Itikim. So Apurani is the Prashnodhishta Shapta Itikim is the Prashna Vachaka Shapta and then the Pratyudaharana is Kalyani Panchami Ratrihi Yasam Taha Kalyani Panchamaha Ratrayaha. The question is, why should the Uttaravada not end in the Purana suffix in order to generate the Pumad Bhava while referring to the same entity and denoting the same feminine gender? The simple answer is, because if the Uttarabada ends in the Purana suffix, then the operation of Pumad Bhava will not take, take place as is observed in the usage. This is a necessary condition. So the meaning is, the nights, fifth of which is auspicious, Kalyani, Panchami, Ratrihi, Yasam, Taha, Ratraya. The nights, fifth of which is auspicious. So here we have Kalyani plus Su plus Panchami plus Su as the Laukika Vigraha, as the Alaukika Vigraha. And then we add the suffix Ap by the Sutra Ap Purani Pramanyoho. And so we have Kalyani plus Su plus Panchami plus Su and the Samasanta Pratyaya Ap gets added, 54116. And then we have the Pratipadika Saudhnya, so Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and so we have Kalyani plus zero plus Panchami plus zero plus A. 
Now because of a, the final e in Panchami gets deleted because of yes yeti cha. So we have Kalyani plus zero plus Pancham plus zero plus a. And then when we join these together, we get the form Kalyani Panchama. Now when we add the suffix su after it, we add the feminine suffix tap as well. So we have Kalyani Panchama plus tap plus su. And then when we delete su on account of the sutra Halgya Bhyodirghat, we get Kalyani Panchama plus a. And then when we join them together, we get the form Kalyani Panchama Ratrihi or Ratrayaha. Here the Purvapada is Kalyani. This word denotes feminine gender after adding the suffix Nip to the Pratipadika, nominal root Kalyana. The word Kalyana denotes the same core meaning, namely auspicious, when used in all three genders. So it is a Bhashita Pumska word. It also is co-referential with the meaning of the Uttarapada, namely Ratri. or Panchami. So all other conditions applying, namely Purvapada denoting feminine gender, Purvapada being a Bhashita Pumska, Purvapada being co-referential with the Uttarapada, then Uttarapada denoting the feminine gender, and Uttarapada not belonging to the words which are part of the group Priyati. All these conditions applying, the condition of the Uttarapada ending, not ending in the Purana is not fulfilled. The Uttarapada does end in the Purana suffix. And hence, the operation of the Pumad Bhava does not take place. So the next question is, what is a Purana suffix? So Purana suffix is added to a number word denoting the sense of order. In general, the Purana suffix derives the form which are called ordinals. These are stated by the Sutra Tasya Purana Dat 5248 onwards. So if we have the number word Panchan, Panchan is the Pratipadika form and the suffix Dat is added to it, then the augment Mat is added to it, Nantada Sankhyadir Mat and then we get the form Panchama. Panchan is 5 Panchama is fifth. Similarly, Saptan means seven and Saptama means seventh by the same process, by adding the suffix dat first and then by adding mat to it. Similarly, Ashtan means eight and Ashtama means eighth. Navan means nine, Navama means ninth, Dashan means ten, Dashama means 10th. So Panchan, Saptan, Ashtan, Navan, Dashan, these are the Sankhya Vachaka Shaptas and as well as Sankhya Ya Vachaka Shaptas. But Panchama, Saptama, Ashtama, Navama and Dashama, these are the Purana Pratyanta Shaptas which stand for the ordinals. They denote the order. These are the words which are referred to as Purana Pratyanta Shaptas. So the Uttarapada in this Samasa should not be Purana Pratyayanta in order that the Pumad Bhava operation takes place. So Kalyani Panchami Ratrihi Yasam, here we don't have Pumad Bhava because the Uttarapada contains Panchami involving the Purana Pratyaya Dat as well as Mat then. And finally, A Priyadishu Itakim. Kalyani Priyaha. Here the Prashnotishta Shabda is Apriyadishu. Itikim is the Prashna Vachaka Shabda. And then we have Kalyani Priyaha as the Pratyudaharana, indicating that had there been the word Apriyadishu absent in the Sutra, we wouldn't be able to derive the form Kalyani Priya. The question is why should the Uttarvada not have a word that belongs to the group Priyadi in order? that the Pumad Bhava operation takes place while referring to the same entity and denoting the same feminine gender. The simple answer is because if the Uttarapada 
has a word that belongs to the group Priyadi, then the operation of Pumad Bhava will not take place as per the usage of the speakers of Sanskrit. So, a Priyadishu is the necessary condition. So we have the meaning, one whose favorite is an auspicious Kalyani Priya Yasyasaha. This is the Laukika Vigraha. And the Alaukika Vigraha is Kalyani plus Su plus Priya plus Su. Now the Samasa Saudhnya takes place. This is the Bahuvrihi Samasa. Then the Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place. And then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies. So we have Kalyani plus zero plus Priya plus zero. And then we join them together and we get the form Kalyani Priya. And now because this is a Bahuvrihi Samasa, so Gostriya Rupasarajanasya applies and shortens the long vowel at the end of the Samasa. And so we get the form Kalyani Priya as the finally derived Bahuvrihi Samasa output. Then we add the suffix Su to it, Kalyani Priya plus Su. So we get Kalyani Priyaha fit to be used in a sentence. Here the Purvapada is Kalyani. This word denotes feminine gender after adding the suffix ni to the Pratipadika that is Kalyana. The word Kalyana denotes the same core meaning namely a species when used in all three genders. So it is a Bhashita Pumska word. It also is co-referential with the meaning of the Uttarapada. So all other conditions applying namely Purvapada denoting feminine gender, Purvapada being a Bhashita Pumska, Purvapada being co-referential with the Uttarapada, and the Uttarapada denoting the feminine gender, the Uttarapada not ending in the Purana suffix, all these conditions applying, the condition of Uttarapada not belonging to the words which are part of the group Priyati is not fulfilled. And hence, the operation of the Pumad Bhava does not take place. Now the question is, what is Priyadi? What is this list? What does it contain? Here are the members of this group, Priya, Manodnya, Kalyani, Subhaga, Durbhaga, Bhaktihi, Sachiva, Amba, Kshanta, Kshanta, Sama, Chapala, Duhita and Vama. Remember, the word Kalyani is also part of the Priyadi group, but that is the Uttarapada condition and not the Purvapada. So, how do we form, the question is, how do we form the Bahuvrihi Samasa, Dridha Bhaktihi, one who has firm devotion, with the possible dissolution, Dridha Bhaktihi Yasyasaha, as we saw that the word Bhaktihi appears in the Priyadi group. So, obviously the Pumad Bhava is prohibited when Bhakti is the Uttarapada. So then, how does Dridha become Dridha? That is the question. The solution is the following. Since the word bhakti is mentioned in the Priyadi list, the Pumad Bhava is negated, this is obvious. So here the possible dissolution accepted is Dridham Bhakti Yasyasaha. And Dridham refers to the generic nature of being strong. Dridham Bhakti Yasyasaha and not Dridha Bhakti Yasyasaha. If it were Dridha Bhakti Yasyasaha, then obviously the Pumad Bhava is negated. So we don't get the form Dridha Bhaktihi, rather we would get the form Dridha Bhaktihi. Right now, the resolution is Dridham Bhaktihi Yasyasaha and therefore the Samasa output form is also Dridha Bhaktihi. This brings us close to the this brings us to the close of the discussion on 6334. We won't go into the details of some other sutras, subsequent sutras in the same section of 6.3. But to summarize, Pumbad Bhava is a peculiar operation stated to the Purvapada of the Bahurihi Samasa. It requires both the Purvapada as well as Uttarapada denoting feminine gender as well as same referent as well as both of them are the basic conditions. 
In addition, there are certain conditions that the Purvapada has to fulfill and certain other conditions that the Uttarapada has to fulfill. When all the specific conditions are fulfilled, the feminine form in the Purvapada goes back to its Pratipadika or nominal root form. This is what is known as the Pumvad Bhava and we are satisfied that we have studied at least one sutra in detail, spending good amount of time on this very important phenomenon which is part of the Bahuvrihi Samasa. We shall now deal with the Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras from next lecture onwards. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.